at six o'clock and I'm calling a 12th regular meeting of the 2020-2021 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Don't count the days, make the days count. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Bourne? Here. Here. Alderperson Donahue? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alder Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Phillips? Here. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Sorensen? Here. Alderperson Savaglio? Present. Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. There are 10 present. Thank you. Next, uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our 11th uh, regular council meeting held on September 8th. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from our September 8th meeting. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Or opposed? Aye. 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 Or opposed? Motion passes. Item 4.1 is confirmation of the mayor's appointments. Turn it over to City Attorney Charles Adams. And the mayor submits the following appointment for your consideration. Gerald Jones is to be considered for appointment to the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners to fill the unexpired term of Henry Young, whose term expires on April 21, 2025. Thank you. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the appointment. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll on the appointment? Alderperson Phillips? Alderperson Ackley? Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Aye. Aye. Alderperson Ackley? I was an aye. Sorry, I was having technology problems. Okay. Ten eyes. Motion passes. <laughs> Next, we'll be moving on to election of a representative on the Board of Water Commissioners. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move that nominations be received from the floor. Voting be done by open ballot. And if two or more candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and the balloting continue until one candidate receives a majority. Is there a second? Thank you very much. That, mo that motion is on the floor. Nominations are open. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to nominate Thomas Howie. Is there a second? Second. Th Thomas, do you accept the nomination? Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the city clerk be instructed to cast a unanimous ballot for Thomas Howie as the representative to the board and water commissioners. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. You need to call those in favor. Yes. The clerk call the roll then. Thank <laughs> you. 
Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Aye. Alderperson Savat. Oh, we got it. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Congratulations, Thomas. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to public forum. I'll turn it over to City Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first up tonight is Dulcie Johnson. State your name and address for us, please. Dulce Johnson, 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. I follow the council meeting agendas rather closely, but I never see any documents related to the operation of the ambulance service. So in the interest of transparency, I am again presenting my State of the City's Ambulance Service report based on data received in an FOIA request for the operation of the service in 2019. The salaries and benefits for the four firefighters included in the 280 ambulance fund budget was just under $108,000 per hire. That's an increase of about $7,400 from last year. Figuring 18 additional firefighters' salary benefits at 75%, the total salaries and benefits for the 22 ambulance personnel was just under $1,900,000. That figure, of course, is actually higher because of the longevity factor for some of the ambulance personnel. Total collections were $1,302,444, or 37% of the billings, the same percentage as in 2018. So the personnel costs of the service was almost $600,000 more than what was actually collected. The average charge per call was $988. The average collection was $364 um, for a loss of $624 per call. That means your constituents subsidized approximately two-thirds of the cost of every call for city residents and non-city residents. The total cost of operating the service without any administrative costs was just over $2,200,000. Subtracting expenses from revenues results in a loss of over $900,000. That loss would be well over a million if administrative costs were included in the calculation. So if you hear that the department made a million dollars, you might consider that fake news. One of the four recommendations of the Independent Fire Department study was, and I quote, the city should consider adjusting their financials to reflect the 18 FTEs adjusted to 75% as a more representative cost allocation for EMS staffing requirements, which I have always done. <clears throat> Ambulance calls accounted for 78% of calls in 2019, but there were only 50 structure fire calls. That's less than 1% of calls and fewer than one call per station per month. Having so few fires is a positive, but it begs the question of how the department should be staffed. Of course, we immediately hear about how minutes count. But we know ex from experience that living next door to a fire station is no guarantee of a good result. Some of you will remember a few years ago, a man died in a fire in an apartment building next door to the Mead Fire Station. And there have been two fat fatalities in fires this year in Sheboygan in the near downtown area, one just a block from where I live. Of course, no one has been able to explain why so many Sheboygan firefighters live outside the city and are dependent on volunteer fire services. Evidently, minutes don't matter outside the city. Do we need five stations to cover 50 structure fires a year? The council needs to balance the risk with what the taxpayers can afford and how much risk is acceptable. Taking over the ambulance service in 2008 was Chief Latusky's realization of the need to justify the cost of the fire department's budget. 
At the time the department took over the service, someone called the takeover the Firefighters Guaranteed Employment Act. Ambulance drivers continue to wander around the city on what one citizen labeled joy rides. Evidently, ambulance drivers feel they can go wherever they want if they, choose, if they are not responding to a call. You will note that actual fuel expenses were 34% higher than budgeted in 2019. Actually, I noticed a fire truck on a scenic drive along the lake one day. No lights, no sirens, just enjoying the view. There aren't any buildings along there that need to be inspected, but it was a lovely sunny day, and evidently minutes didn't matter that afternoon. Why does the department refuse to compute the cost of operating the ambulance service? Will the 2020 ambulance budget more accurately, accurately reflect the actual cost of the service? Thank you. Thank you. The next person is Jerry Plain. Hi, Jerry. Can you just state your name and address for us, please? Jerry Plain, 211 Auburn Drive, Sheboygan Falls. You have five minutes. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you in regard to the proposed Making Spirits Bright Agreement with the City of Sheboygan. I would believe all of you appreciate the value this event has provided to the county, both from the pantry collection benefit to Sheboygan County Food Bank, as well as the entertainment to families, particularly this year, when so many other events have been canceled. We are on the map as a winter destination in a normal environment for motor coach travelers bringing tourism dollars to the area as well. We have no desire to delay our exit in the park beyond what is necessary. With no snow or frost to speak of last year, we exited in three and a half days, allowing for full trail grooming six and a half days ahead of schedule. What the, this extended time frame would provide is additional opportunity to not violate our agreement should we have a large amount of snow or frost. Every year, our team refines the procedure, making our dismantling process more efficient. Per the instructions given us last year at this time, to continue discussion with public works and the ski volunteers, we provided some additional suggestions for making skiing during our event a more plausible coexistence, particularly as it relates to Area 4. We sent an emailed proposal um, in April to the Public Works Department and Jim Van Akron. Mr. Van Akron did not respond. The new bridge would be a solution for all, but we understand budget constraints can prevent the best laid plans. This proposal was recently approved by the Public Works Committee, and there is an urgency on our part since we need to begin setting up our displays the first week in October. Thank you for your attention and consideration, and we ask that you approve the proposal as presented. There's no one else this evening. Thank you very much. Next, we'll go on to Mayor's announcements. Today, I'd like to give a COVID update for Monday, September 21st. Um, just a little review of the numbers. This week on Monday, we had today 1,488 positive cases. That's up 207 from last week where we had 1,281. The active cases right now are at 143 cases. That's up 19 from last week where we had 124. We have 1,330 recovered cases. That's increased uh, by 183 cases over last week's 100, uh, one, 1,000, rather, 147. We currently have uh, 11 uh, people in the hospital. That's up two from last week where we had nine people in the hospital. Unfortunately, in the last week, we've seen five new deaths. We had 10 last week, and now we're up to 15 deaths. We have had 34,011 negative test total. That's up 200 
are there 2,315 cases from last week. In recent weeks, I've received several calls to learn about how the coronavirus uh, pandemic will affect trick-or-treating on Halloween. After consulting with the Sheboygan County Public Health Department, I'd like to let you know that trick-or-treating in Halloween will be held from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock on Saturday, October 20, 31st, and the Sheboygan County Division of Public Health is supportive of safe trick-or-treating with proper best practices to limit the spread of COVID-19. They also feel that uh, we should avoid large outdoor and indoor gatherings such as parties, festivals, and parades, and attending large gatherings and social events. Those items are not recommended. Residents that plan to have uh, treats for the trick-or-treat participants in Halloween are asked to turn their porch light on from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. The public health trick-or-treat best practices for residents are if you or someone at your home is sick, do not hand out any treats. Wear a face mask that covers both your mouth and nose when greeting the trick-or-treat participants. Homeowners should make the treats available by setting them on a table or a tray outside of handling the treats individually. Avoid in-person contact. The public health trick-or-treat best practices for children and their parents are, again, to stay home if sick. Do not participate in trick-or-treating if you're sick. Only trick-or-treat with people you live with. Practice social distancing and remain six feet apart from other people that are not in your household. Wear a face mask that covers both your mouth and nose when appropriate. This means under and or over your Halloween costume is necessary. Have sanitizer available to use before eating any candy while trick-or-treating. And examine all treats and wash your hands before eating treats at home. The city uh, last Friday mailed absentee ballots for the November election last Friday. Ballots uh, can be mailed back to the clerk's office. Ballots can also be dropped off in the collection box located in the lobby of City Hall or the drop-off box that's located next to the drive through lane at the Mead Public Library. They will continue to mail out ballots as, uh, as those are requested. Advocate Aurora Health continues with their plans to build a new hospital, and they're engaging the neighbors about the sale and redevelopment of the Aurora Sheboygan Medical, Mentors, Medical Center campus at 2629 North 7th Street. You can join them for a virtual community information meeting about the future redevelopment of the Aurora Sheboygan Memorial Center campus. They will be sharing information about the timeline, and there will be opportunities to give feedback and ask questions. These virtual meetings will be held late, later this week and early next week. This week, it'll be tomorrow on September 22nd at 6.30, Wednesday, September 23rd at 4 o'clock, and next Monday, September 28th at 6.30. Participants can attend the meeting from home in one of three ways via Zoom meeting, by tuning into WSCS live broadcast, and by attending a viewing session in person in the city uh, council chambers here on the third floor of City Hall. You can see the city website uh, for more information about these viewing options. There's a beach cleanup day that's scheduled for this Saturday, September 26th from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock at both North uh, Beach and King Park Beach. And there will be a virtual poetry reading on Saturday, September 26th from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. This is being put together by uh, our poet laureate, Lisa Vijos. And this uh, poetry reading will be available uh, on facebook.com slash meadpl. Thank you. Next, we'll conduct two hearings. The first hearing, item 2.1, is hearing number one of 2021 pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices sent by the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city's future land use map of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification of property located on the northwest corner of Broadway and South Business Drive, a portion of parcel 5928151391 
from class multifamily residential to class mixed use classification. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Please step up to the microphone. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. My name is Troy Malezova, real estate manager, Quick Trip, address 1626 Oak Street, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Thank you for your time this evening. Uh, I'd just like to register and speak in favor of amending the city's future land use map from multifamily residential to mixed use. Our proposal here would be part of the uh, Oscar apartment project. There's a two and a half acre lot on the hard corner of business and Broadway at the signalized intersection that we request uh, rezoning from um, multifamily residential, excuse me, the land use map amendment from multifamily residential to mixed use. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your comments. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Sorensen? Thank you, Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for the motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 2.2 .2 is hearing number two of 2021 pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices and sent out by the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city of Sheboygan's official zoning map to change the use district classification of property located in the northwest corner of Broadway and South Business Drive, a portion of parcel 59281513391 from class urban residential to class UR12, class urban commercial. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Again, Mayor, members of the council, Troy Malezova, Quick Strip, real estate manager, 1626 Oak Street, Wisconsin, or Oak Street, La Crosse, Wisconsin, excuse me. Uh, I'd like to register and speak in favor of amending the zoning map for the property from urban residential to urban commercial. Again, a partner item related to the zoning on this parcel, which was long time used as the Vandervart property uh, for commercial. Uh, the zoning was changed to support the Oscar project. And again, this next step in the zoning process would rezone that commercial corner from residential to urban commercial. And we ask for your support in that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. All those in favor of the motion to close the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed? Motion passes, hearing is closed. Next we'll move on to consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.12. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs and receive all reports of committees and adopt all the remaining resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion support. Is there any discussion on any of those items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, item 4.1 is RO number 68 of 2021 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Wisconsin Department of Administration regarding the acuity annexation. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file the document. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? 
motion passes. Item 4.2 is RO number 69 of 2021 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 19 of 2021 by Alder Person Sorensen and Boren and RO number 63 of 2021 by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Acuity filing a petition for direct annexation by unanimous consent for land currently located in the town of Sheboygan, part of parcel 59024-353310 and recommends receiving the RO and adopting the ordinance. Alderperson Bourne. Alderperson Bourne, I believe you're muted. Uh, according to according to my mic, it's on. You're coming through. Please make your motion. All right. Thank you. Uh, motion to receive the RO and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. <clears throat> Items 4.3 through 4.9 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 is resolution number 94 of 2021 by Alderperson Zackley, Donahue, Boren, Savaglio, Feliki, Paneski, Feldy, Phillips, Sorensen, Mitchell, and Decker commemorating the distinguished service of Leonard Becker to the city of Sheboygan. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I ask for the suspension of the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes unanimously. Item 5.2 is resolution number 86 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Donahue, authorizing the purchase of 1817 North 8th Street, the former Save-A-Lot, for future use by the city. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I call for the suspension of the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. I move to um, adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is resolution number 87 of 2021 by Alderpersons Donahue and Bourne authorizing the city attorney's office to settle the matter of accurate repairs versus the city of Sheboygan case number 2018CV00671. Alderpersons Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move to uh, uh, adopt the uh, resolution. We need a suspension first. Um, I move to suspend the rules. Is there Second. any is, is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you. I um, uh, move to uh, adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. 
Item 5.4 is resolution number 93 of 2021 by Alderpersons Decker and Sorensen declaring a public emergency with respect to the condition of the Shoreline Metro Transportation Facility roof and authorizing the appropriate city officials to negotiate and enter into an agreement with Kashuk Roofing Incorporated for the replacement of all decking on the roof at Shoreline Metro Transportation Facility and authorizing the appropriate city officials to seek and accept CARES Act funding for this project. Alderperson Decker. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I ask to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. I uh, request to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Uh, items 5.5 .5 through 5.9 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is RC number 142 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 81 of 2021 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren, providing for the sale of approximately 11,190,000 of tax and old general obligation refunding bonds series 2020D, and recommends adopting the resolution as amended. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, receive the report of the committee and adopt uh, the substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 143 of 2021 by the Public Works Committee. Two months referred resolution number 82 of 2021 by Alderpersons Decker and Sorensen authorizing entering into a master agreement with Stonebrook Crossing LLC and recommends adopting the resolution as amended. Alderperson Decker. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Motion to receive the report of the committee and adopt the substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 144 of 2021 by the Public Works Committee. To whom is referred resolution number 83 of 2021 by all the persons Decker and Sorensen authorizing entering into an agreement with Making Spirits Bright Incorporated for use of Evergreen Park and the Quarry View Center for the annual Making Spirits Bright drive through holiday lights display and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move, move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Mayor. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I know that this topic has been obviously bounced around um, a little bit between um, the, the Public Works Committee um, and all the different groups that involved. Um, I do appreciate everyone's uh, willingness to focus on this issue um, and get it done, I think, more than ever. Um, the work that Making Spears Sprite does in their partnership with the food bank is, is gonna be critical. Um, I know the food bank has been uh, working overtime and um, working their um, their rear ends off just with the amount of food that is needed. Um, I know the next coming months, definitely there'll be a strain on this as we move to the holiday season. So I appreciate the work from um, the Public Works Department um, and Joe Curlin for um, uh, leading up uh, the Parks and Forestry Division too on this and, and working alongside the Making Spirits Parade thing. So I, I speak in favor of this um, resolution tonight. 
Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Mayor, I have a... Go ahead, Jim. Mayor. Mayor well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, I would all, I would like to second what Alderman Sorensen said. I want to thank, uh, thank Jerry uh, Plain and the uh, Rotary Club for an excellent event for the city. And I also want to thank uh, Joe Curlin and his team down at uh, Public Works for the outstanding job they've been doing on this over the years. I believe uh, years ago when this started, I was on the Public, uh, uh, Public Works Committee and it's... Uh, just gratifying to see how far this event has come over the years and what a benefit it is to the community. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Mayor? Go ahead, all the person Donahue. Um, and while I certainly uh, support what Alders uh, Sorensen and Boren have said, I'm also pleased to see that the parties, uh, that is uh, the Making Spirits Bright folks and the skiers, <coughs> are continuing their negotiations and the city is paying attention, I think, to the very well-founded concerns of the skiers. Obviously, what Making Spirits Bright does is exactly that. It makes spirits bright for people who like, you know, the, the event, which is extensive and, and well-produced. Um, but in pandemic times, a competing interest, not competing with, with, with what make, Making Spirits Bright does, but certainly complementary to that, is encouraging people in, and what I am sure will be very important this winter, a sporting event and a uh, access to uh, a beautiful park, uh, which the skiers did inhabit before Making Spirits Bright came. Um, it is one of those uh, COVID-related uh, events that um, I think respects social distancing. Um, and so I am glad, uh, reading Mr. Shar's letter, that progress is made and continues to be made. I have walked that trail, and I have seen the issues that the skiers have. And the fact that they continue, the parties continue to negotiate and move forward in good faith, I think is very important. Um, the park is critically important for our citizens and their mental and physical health. And making spirits bright, I think, is very important for uh, people's sense of well-being around the around the uh, the Christmas holiday, as as well as the support to the food bank. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Hi, Mr. Mayor. You could please go ahead. Um, my, my, uh, I heard Alderman Donahue and, um, uh, uh, the COVID related issues and truly do support making spirits right because they do. My question is the document in front of us gives, gives making spirits right five years, I believe. Uh, it's a five year, five year document. Um, if indeed the, the skiers and making spirits right continue to discuss, should the document be five years or should it be perhaps two years uh, and see where we are? I know there's a comment about replacing bridges, et cetera. Uh, that was just my question. I don't know who can answer it. Maybe somebody on public work. Joe, would you like to take that? Maybe to say, yeah. Sure. Um, so the the agreement before you tonight is um, is is an agreement that um, um, comes after an agreement for the last five years. So um, their last agreement again lasted for five years. We're going for another five years here. Um, at any time during that agreement, you know, we can make things work. If we, th there's a lot of things that can happen um, that really don't need to be in the agreement. So the possibility of having a new bridge in Area 5, um, that can greatly help relieve some of the things that's going on. Really, does that need to be in the agreement? No. Um, the city is supporting both uh, programs. And we won't. We want both programs to um, to improve and and get better. Um, so we're going to work to improve as things come along, as we are able to uh, develop um, certain um, pathways. So I, I, I believe I'd, I'd really like to see this go for five years. Um, 
groups can come together and, and still try to make uh, things better as we go. Um, and I, I would expect after five years, we'll probably even be looking for a, for a, a longer agreement after this one. Thank you for those comments. Does that help you, Mayor? Roberto? Go ahead, Alderman Person Donahue. And I, I don't know if Chad is in the chambers. I, I had understood that there was money for replacement of that bridge, which is a great concern to the skiers, and really solved a lot of problems. Did that did that not happen, or will it be happening? That is in the capital improvements program, and uh, it, we plan to, to to do that uh, next or build that new bridge next year, but it hasn't been done yet. And I think that that will that will go a long way toward resolving uh, the competing interests of the groups here. So I am certainly hopeful that that will um, that that will get done. Five year agreement or not? Correct. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing no other discussion, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is RC number 145 of 2021 by the Public Works Committee. Puma's referred direct referral resolution number 85 of 2021 by Alderpersons Decker and Sorensen, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with J&H Controls Incorporated to upgrade the automatic temperature control system at the Sheboygan Police Department recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mayor. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I made a couple of phone calls on this today. I talked to uh, Director Beeble and also uh, Mike uh, Wilmus. And it's kind of interesting, maybe David could kind of cover this doesn't only help out the police department, but also some other city buildings in managing our energy use and that type of thing. If David would maybe just want to, or Mike, if he's there, want to make some comments on that? Uh, department Head Beeble, would you like to comment? Uh, I can make some brief comments, Mayor, and also we have with us this evening, Mike Wilmus, Superintendent of Facilities and Traffic, who, if we, we want to get real technical about this, um, I'm going to defer to him. But ultimately what this helps us with is we're starting to um, be getting more standardized in our building automation. Uh, with the remodeling of City Hall, we had the opportunity to modernize and upgrade this facility. And all of the mechanical systems in terms of the HVAC systems, the the um, access control, for instance, for security and so forth. Um, we have that standardized with the same system as what we have at their service building. And now we're looking uh, with the changes at the police department, modernizing that system so it's consistent along with our other building systems so it can be centralized into one computer system that Mike and his team manage. So um, it, it's Ultimately, it's going to help us efficiency and, and help us in terms of maintaining and, and being on top of systems that are facilities. And I, if you don't mind, Mayor, I would like to defer to Mike, and he can explain some of that even further. Mike, if you'd like to step up to one of the microphones. <clears throat> Good evening, committee. So, and representing from what David was uh, just talking about, this basically what we're going to be doing is working with our IT department, and in future, we're gonna have a, a server sitting at City Hall, which is gonna manage uh, the building automation systems, um, which we're hoping to get all the facilities on board someday, as, as no uh, money permits. Um, granted, the city uh, senior center, and we're kind of taking off right now because um, we're gonna be moving the senior center, uh, hopefully to a different location. But we did have three, we would have three buildings, the senior center, MSB, and City Hall. Um, in the future, I can see transit coming onto it, some of the fire departments at a lesser, um, I haven't even say, at a lesser capacity because of um, the facilities don't uh, um, require as much as this facility. But, um, but all in all, for the, the maintenance end of it, tracking, having our gentlemen respond to emergencies, whether um, heating, cooling, 
we can do it in a, in a very in a very timely manner. Is Thank there you any other questions on that? Does that cover it, Alderperson Boring? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen, for that explanation. Is there any other discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.5 is RC number 146 of 2021 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred General Ordinance number 21 of 2021 by all the persons Decker and Sorensen amending section 134-178 of the Municipal Code to more clearly identify the A Street boat launch and recommends uh, the ordinance to remove and the 1300 block of Niagara Avenue Alderperson Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under uh, matters laid over, I'll turn it over to C City Attorney Charles Adams. No, I take that back. Matters laid over, 8.1 is RO number 61 of 2021 by the City Planning Commission. Doom was referred General Ordinance number 16 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen, amending the city's future land use map in the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification of property located on the northwest corner of Broadway and South Business Drive, a portion of parcel 59281513391 from class multifamily residential to class community mixed use classification and wishes to report this matter was discussed at a regular meeting of the City Planning Commission on August 25th of 2020 and after due consideration recommends receiving the RO and adopting the general ordinance. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, make a motion to receive the RO and adopt the general ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Will the clerk then please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 8.2 is RO number 62 of 2021 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred res General Ordinance number 17 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Boren and RO number 53 of 2021 by the City Clerk submitting an application from Quick Trip Incorporated for a change in the zoning classification of property located on the northwest corner of Broadway and South Business Drive, portion of parcel number 5928 one five one three three nine one from class urban residential UR twelve to class urban commercial UC classification and wishes to report that this matter was discussed at a regular meeting of the City Planning Commission on August twenty fifth of twenty twenty and after due consideration recommends receiving the RO and adopting the general ordinance. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RO and adopt the general ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Next is a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under exemption provided in section 19.851E of Wisconsin State Statutes, where competitive and bargaining sessions require a closed session related to the possible sale of city owned land in the South Enterprise campus. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll for closed session?
Alderperson Donahue? Aye. Thank you. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Alderperson Sorensen? We will uh, take, uh, we will go into closed session. The meeting uh, will uh, not be uh, coming back on TV. This will end our TV broadcast for this evening. So we'll take a short recess. Thank you. <coughs>